In Valheim, you have a great selection of pieces to help you fill in your roofs. Regular roof pieces, which are great at basic roof filling, corner pieces for filling in corners of course, and also the aesthetically pleasing roof peaks for the tops of your roofs. But sometimes these pre-made pieces don't fill all the gaps. Not to mention there are some ways to use these pre-made pieces that might surprise you. First we'll talk about these three pre-made pieces and the ways you can use them, and then we'll talk about how to get creative and make your own way. Let's do it. Number one, using regular roof pieces and roof peak pieces. Regular roof pieces are great at filling in the most obvious of gaps in your roof, but they can sometimes leave you with gaps or overlapping roof pieces at the very top. Roof peak pieces are great at filling in the gaps in the tops of your roof, but they don't always fit. The funny thing is, as long as your building is an even number of meters wide, you will always be able to fill it perfectly with either regular roof pieces or roof peak pieces. Number two, roof corners. With corner pieces, you have O corners and I corners. O corner roof pieces will be added to the outside corners of the roof of the build. The I corner roof piece will be added to the inside corners of the build. When using corner pieces, you will use 26 degree corner pieces with 26 degree roof pieces and 45 degree corner pieces with 45 degree roof pieces. This is something to think about when you're building a structure with multiple roofs that meet up. Number three, additional roof features. Sometimes none of the pre-made pieces will fill in the gaps in your roof. At this point, you will have to move on to something more creative. This is when I recommend to build another roof on top of your roof. The best examples of this are circular buildings, which we'll talk about first, and then square buildings, which we'll talk about after that. This should cover every scenario that we haven't already covered earlier in the video by building a structure with a width that is an even number, which if you recall, allows you to use regular roof pieces and roof peak pieces properly. With circular buildings, you have four options for your roof, and a secret one which we'll talk about at the end. You have two options for the type of circle, and you have two options for the type of roof frame. Let's go over all of them. When you create a circular structure, you have two options for the shape of your circle. You can angle your beams once each time to make a circular structure that has many sides, or you can angle your beams twice each time to make a circular structure that has less sides. If you are building along with me, I recommend making two examples of each of these circles right now. In addition to having two ways that you can create your circles, there are two ways that you can build a roof frame onto your circular building. You have a basic 1 meter roof frame and you have an advanced roof frame. If you are building along with me, I recommend adding these two roof frames onto the four circles that you've already made. This leaves us with four examples of circular roofs, so let's go over the two circles with basic roof frames and then the two circles with advanced roof frames. With both circles in the basic roof frame examples, you can start to attach your regular roof pieces onto your basic roof frame, but you can see that eventually they will start to overlap and you won't be able to fully fill in the gap in the middle. At this point, you will line the tops of your roof pieces with wooden beams. From this wooden beam line, you will add your additional roof feature. For the first circle that angles once each time and has more sides, you will notice that you have more wooden beams on the top. This means that finding where to place the shape for your additional roof feature is slightly harder but still easy. Choose a wooden beam on your wooden beam roof line and place a 1 or 2 meter wooden pole in the middle using a hidden 1 meter wooden beam on the inside for a snapping point. For regular sized builds, 1 or 2 meters of height should be plenty for this additional roof feature. From this 1 or 2 meter wooden pole, you will want to build a temporary wooden beam line across the gap in the roof to find out where the exact opposite side is. Once you find it, place another 1 or 2 meter wooden pole and from here it will be much easier to find the other two spots visually. Now you have a square that can be connected by overlapping wooden beams. From here you can place diagonal wooden beams on the tops of the wooden poles and then add corner pieces to fill in the roof gaps. You can adjust the length of the diagonal beams to get the right size additional roof feature to fill the hole if you need to. You can also build a basic roof frame here instead of using diagonal beams for your roof frame if you need a slightly different size location for your corner pieces to fill the gaps. Sometimes with additional roof features, you will be left with a very small gap in between your corner pieces that you cannot fill with a roof piece. In this spot, I like to line both sides of the gap with diagonal beams and the gap will be filled. For the second circle which angles twice each time and has less sides, you will notice that there are less wooden beams across the top. For this example your square will already be there, so no need for temporary wooden beams to locate the opposite side. 
Instead, you can just place a wooden pole on the middle of the four opposite sides, which you can clearly see. Then, build the rest of the additional roof feature just like before. Vertical wooden poles, connect them, add diagonal beams, and then add corner pieces. Okay, so that covers the two different size circles for basic circular roof frames. Now let's talk about the two different size circles for advanced circular roof frames. With both circles in the advanced circular roof frame examples, you can start to attach your roof corner pieces, but you can see that eventually you will not be able to fill in the gap in the middle. At this point, you will add your wooden beams for your additional roof feature, just like we did before, but it will be slightly different. For the first circle that angles once each time and has more sides, you will notice that once again you have more places for wooden beams on the top than for the other example. This time though, you are looking at the tops of corner pieces instead of regular roof pieces. Instead of creating a wooden line around the top like last time, this time you will place a wooden beam facing inwards off of each of the tops of the corner pieces. If you did it right, it will look like this. From here, you can very easily see where to place your four wooden poles for your additional roof feature. Then, just like before, you will connect the wooden poles, then add diagonal beams, then add your corner pieces onto the frame. Now that the gap in the top is filled, the final step for the advanced circular roof frame is to fill in the holes in the rest of the roof. For this example, the example of the circle that angles once each time and has more sides, you can fill in the gaps by placing 45 degree angle roof pieces on the inside of each of the 45 degree angle corner pieces. The trick is, you only need to place them on one side of the 45 degree corner pieces as you go around, and this will fill all of the gaps. It will also create a very nice inside for your roof. For the second circle that angles twice each time and has less sides, you will once again notice that it has less places for wooden beams, just like with the basic frame examples. Place your wooden beams just like on the other advanced roof frame example, but this time there will be less of them. If you did it right, it will look like this. After that, add your additional roof feature to the top just like before. Vertical wooden poles, connect them, add diagonal beams, and add corner pieces. Now that the gap in the top of the roof is filled, the final step for the advanced circular frames is to fill in the rest of the holes in the roof. For this example, unlike the other one, you will have to place a 45 degree roof piece onto both sides of the roof corner pieces to fully fill in the gaps. This will also create a very nice inside for your roof. It is important to know that every size circle is going to be slightly different with how you connect them at the top and how you fill in the gaps. But I have now showed you enough examples at this size and scale that you will be able to fill in all circle gaps that you can run into. I have two final thoughts on circles to wrap it all up. Number one, if you want, you can leave out the vertical poles on each of these additional roof feature examples. This will create a smaller and less aesthetically pleasing additional roof feature, but it will save you some materials, it will give you a different look to choose from, and it will also give you back some build height in case you're having problems supporting the roof. If you are having problems supporting the roof, I recommend using iron poles to support the structure and iron beams around the top circle next to the roof. Number two, technically speaking, there is another way that you can make a circle, but I left it out to keep things simple. Now I will show you very quickly how to make it. Before, we created the circle from the outside first. The new circle is created from the inside instead. Place a two meter wooden beam on the ground and then rotate once each time you place another, connecting each beam to the center of the circle. You can change the size of this circle by simply adding more length to the beams. We are starting with the advanced roof frame example first, and then we will talk about the basic. Once you add the height to your new circle example, all you need to do now is place a one meter wooden beam sticking out from each of the poles, and then you can place your corner pieces directly onto that beam for your advanced roof frame. You can see that this circle allows you to place your roof corner pieces onto the poles instead of in between them, and this circle also simplifies the roof frame. This circle makes it harder to connect the sides of the circle because you have to use two beams on each side, but it makes the roof easier to work with. This circle will sometimes also require an additional roof feature just like the circles we did before. In that case, you will add the additional roof feature just like before on the advanced roof examples. Place beams going to the center from the tops of your corner pieces, place vertical poles in a square, connect them, and then add diagonal beams for a place for your roof corners. Now just like with the other circle roof examples, you also have a basic roof frame that you can do on this new circle. You will use the one meter beams that we used for the advanced roof frame that stick out from the tops of the supporting poles. 
Here you will place a 1 meter beam on each side of the existing 1 meter beams. This will give you a place for your roof pieces and then you will once again build an additional roof feature to fill the final gap. Alright that is it for the circular examples of filling in roofs, but what about square roofs? For example, you might have a regular building or house that has a roof in the shape of a square, or maybe you might be working on the top of a square tower. Many times the corner pieces will not meet up in these situations. There are four solutions that I like to use for this. First of all, we have a solution like at the beginning of the video. At the beginning of the video, we talked about using even lengths for the sides of your build so that you can use roof peaks and regular roof pieces properly. This means your sides need to be divisible by two. Moving on to square examples, you will need the sides of your square to be divisible by four for the roof corners to meet up properly in the middle. A great example to show this is a square building with sides that are six meters in length. Then you add your basic one meter roof frame all the way around and this adds two meters to the length of your sides giving you eight meter sides. This is divisible by four so your corner pieces will now meet up perfectly. And also, as an added bonus, you get to include a roof frame in this example so your build looks more realistic because your roof sticks out over your build. Now let's say you've already built your structure and you don't want to redo the whole thing. Instead, you can do the second solution which is to adjust the size of your basic roof frame so that the top of your roof is divisible by 4 and so that your corner pieces will meet up in the middle. This is a decent solution but if you go too far with the roof frame it will look terrible so be careful. The third thing you can do is simply take a roof peak piece and place it on the gap in the top where your corner pieces won't fill in. You can choose whichever way you would like it to face. This will leave two holes open for two small windows where you can then frame them out with some wooden details if you like. You can even add vertical poles here making this into an additional roof feature. That of course leads me to the fourth and last solution where you can create one of the additional roof features that we've already gone over but here on a square roof. As you've seen with solution number three, you can do this with a roof peak or you can also do it the way we've done before with roof corner pieces. For this additional roof feature, I recommend using a basic roof frame instead of the diagonal beams roof frame that we used in the circular examples. Now you know how to fill in the gaps in virtually any roof in Valheim. The next stage is knowing how to control roof size and shape. If you are interested in that, it is the next video in this tutorial series and you will see a link here once the video is out. If you don't see the link yet, you could subscribe and turn on the bell so that you get notified when the next tutorial comes out. Speaking of, don't forget to leave a like, it helps me out a lot, and also I have other forms of social media if you're interested and a PayPal if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching, more coming soon, and as always, have a good one.